Hi guys, my name is Saddam Qasim and I'm your WordPress instructor. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can make a custom design of your blog page. I know, when we install WordPress, the blog page always looks very boring. So in this video, we are going to design the blog page something similar to WPBeginner.com. If you know about WPBeginner, it is one of the most popular WordPress blog that has a lot of traffic every month. So let's go ahead and we can make a blog something similar to WPBeginner.com. The entire process will be completed in three simple steps. Step 1. Create a blank page with the name blog. Step 2. We will create a custom blog template with the help of Elementor Pro Page Builder. Step 3. We will assign the custom template to the blog page. If you don't have the Elementor Pro Page Builder, then you can go into the video description and you can get the Elementor Pro Page Builder for just $10. I have provided the link in the video description itself. So this is the WordPress website on which I am going to create a blog page. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard and under the pages, we can add a new page with the name blog. After that, we can publish this page. Now let's go back to the WordPress dashboard again and we can add this blog as the menu. So we can jump onto the appearance and then menus. And here we have the blog page. Let's select it and then add to menu. There are some invalid menus as well. So let's go ahead and we can remove those unwanted menus from here. After that, let's save this menu and we can refresh our home page. Okay, so here we have a new menu blog. Let's click on it. So this is the blank blog page. It's time to customize this page so that we can display the dynamic hosts over here as well as we can create a custom sidebar, something similar to WPBeginner.com. As we can see over here on this website, all the posts are dynamically fetch out on the left hand side and in the right hand side, we have some kind of static content as well, just like this social media icons. Then there is an image which is linked to a specific blog post. After that, there are some more content also available. So let's go ahead and we can make a similar blog page something like this on our blog site. So make sure that you have already installed and activated the Elementor Pro Page Builder. If you don't have this plugin, then you need to go onto the video description and get this plugin for just $10, install and activate it on your website. One more thing, you can use any theme on your WordPress website because the method that I'm going to teach you over here, it works with almost all the available themes, whether they are paid or free. So once you will activate the Elementor Pro, then under the templates, you need to click on Theme Builder. After that, we have to click on Add New at the very top. And here we have to create a custom template for our blog page. So from this drop down, you need to select Single Post. And in this box, you can give it a name just like Custom Blog Page template. This name is just for your reference. After that, click on create template button and the Elementor screen will load up. Just close this pop up. If you have ever used the Elementor page builder, then you must be familiar with this interface. So firstly, we need to take a section. Let's click on this plus and then we can take one column section. Now we need to divide this entire section in two columns. So let's add one more column over here. After that, we need to reduce the width of next column. So let's make it something like 33%. Now go on to the section setting and under this style, we need to set a background color. So under the background type, you need to select the classic option and here is the color option. Let's click on this color box and then we can choose a background color. So we need to match it with the WP beginner background. So let's copy the color code from here. Just inspect element and here's the color picker. Basically, this color picker only works on the Mozilla Firefox browser. So if you would be using the Google Chrome, then there would be a different way to get the color code. So I'm just copying the color code from here. Now let's go back to the Elementor and here we have to paste the same color code. Okay. After that, in the second column, first of all, let's make the sidebar ready. So we can take an inner section over here. Let's drop this inner section and delete the second column. Okay. Now on the WB beginner, there is a heading written over here. So let's copy this heading. Now we can come back to the Elementor page builder and here we can drop a heading widget. So this is the heading, just drop it over here. And now we can change the heading. So let's paste the one that we had already copied. Okay. After that, we have to align it to center. Then we can jump onto the style tab and here we can match the font family. So first of all, text color should be something like black. After that, we need to go on to the typography option. Here is the font family. Let's select from here just like Poppins or you can use any font. It's completely up to you. Now let's set the size of this font. So I'm just making it to 16 pixels over here. After that, we have another text written, get fresh content from WP beginner. 
So let's copy it from here. We can come back. We can take this text editor block. Now let's paste the same text. After that we have to align it to center as well. And then after we can change the color code. So let's make it something like this. Okay. After that there are social media icons. So let's come back to the Elementor. Go on to this grid icon or you can see over here Rubik Cube icon. Just click on it. And in the search widget you need to search for SOCIL social. And these are the social icons. Just drop it over here. Now it's time to choose the social media icons. So on the left hand side we have the settings available. If you would like to add one more social media icon. Just click on this add item button. A new tab comes up. So go on to the icon library. And let's say we have to add Instagram. So here is the Instagram icon just select it. Then click on insert button. And it will appear over here. Also we can see a new tab is added. Now if you would like to put your own Instagram page URL. Then you can put it in this box just like HTTPS. So that's my Instagram profile page link. In the same way you can add more icons by just clicking on this add item button. And if you would like to set the Facebook page link. Just click on this Facebook tab. It will be expanded. And here you can provide your own Facebook page URL something like HTTPS like this. Let's add a few more icons. So we can click on add item and here we are going to add Pinterest. I'm not going to put the link right now. Now let's go ahead and we can resize these icons. So go onto the style tab and here we have the size option under the icon tab. So let's set the size from here. I think that looks better. Now it's time to set the background color white as we have on this WB beginner website. So let's go back to this inner section. Here are the six little dots. Just right click on it. Then click on edit inner section. So the settings of this particular inner section will be opened on the left hand side. Now jump onto the style tab and under the background type just select classic. And here we have the color option again. Let's set it to white. Now if you can see over here there's a lot of white space in between this text and the social media icons. So this is what we call the margin. Margin means some kind of extra white space around the elements. So let's go back to the social media icon settings. And under the advanced tab here we can see there are four type of margins at the top right bottom and left. So first of all just uncheck this icon otherwise all the values will be increased simultaneously. Now we need to decrease the top margin. Let's say. If we increase the top margin then you can see the extra white space is increasing. In the same way if we set this value in the negative then the extra margin will be removed. Here we go. So you can see we have successfully removed all the extra white space. One more thing if you can see over here in this particular box I mean in this particular inner section the top heading and the social media icons are very close to the border of this section. So what we need to do we need to go on to the inner section settings. Then under the advanced tab we have to increase the padding. Padding means the inner white space between the border of the section and the elements that we have just placed inside it. So let's increase all the padding at once and we can see the extra white space has been added. Now it is very similar to the one that we have on this website. Now let's create this kind of section. So first of all I have to download this image. So let's save this image. Okay we can go back to the Elementor page builder and here we can duplicate this entire section. So let's duplicate it. So this entire section has been duplicated. Now firstly we need to delete all the elements that we have placed inside it. Alright now if you can see on the WB beginner this is basically a kind of image. So to display an image we have to use the image widget. So firstly we need to click on this plus. Then on the left hand side we have this image widget available. Just drop it. Now the settings are already opened on the left hand side. Click on choose image. Then go on to the upload files and here I have to upload the same image that I have already downloaded. So this was the image. Let's upload it. Then we can click on insert media and it will appear over here. Now next thing if you can see over here there is extra white space around this image. So if you remember in the previous section we had added some kind of internal padding. So now in this second section firstly we need to edit it. Then go on to the advanced and here we have to remove all the padding. After that I suggest you to set the top and bottom margin. So there will be some kind of a space in between these two sections. I mean the upper section and the bottom section. Okay I think 20 pixel is fine. After that go to the second section. And this is the columns icon. Just right click on it. Then click on edit column. Go on to the advanced. And here set the padding to 0. 
So far we have created these two sections similar to the one that we have on wpbeginner.com. Now here we have this preview icon. Let's click on it so that we can have a preview. So click on this preview text and it will open in a new tab. So this is how it looks like. Now let's go back in the left column. We can click on this plus and now in the search widget box, we have to search for POST that is post. So all the widgets matching with the term post will be appearing over here. So let's try to use this one posts. Just drop it over here and it will fetch all the post dynamically. Now on the left hand side, we have the settings available. So the default skin is classic. You can also change it to event or cards or whatever you would like. So it appears something like this. Let's try to play with some other like card. So cards appear something like this. So let's keep it as classic. Now we can check the other options as well like general. So post per page, you can specify how many posts you would like to display on this blog page. So right now it is six. You can set it to nine or 12 or whatever you want. Right now it is three. So let's make it one. Okay. That looks better. Now let's check the other options query. So here you can specify what query type post will be displayed over here. I'm not touching these options right now. And here we have this image tab. So you can check whether you would like to put the image at the top or at the bottom or as the background image means the featured image. I haven't set any featured image for these blog posts. That's why the images are not showing over here. And then after we have this title. So you have the option whether you would like to display the title and you would like to link the title to its specific blog post or not. So there are so many options available over here. And then we have this call to action button as well. So you can see call to action. Let's click on it. Now you can change the text as well, like read more or you would like to say visit post. So the button text changes. So it's up to you whether you would like to customize it or not. After that, let's go ahead and we can complete the remaining step. So this is also an image. Let's save it. Now let's go back to the Elementor. We can duplicate this second section again and it's time to change the image. So go on to the choose image, upload files and this is the second image. Okay. Insert media. So it appears over here. After that, we have next section like this. So basically this is an inner section, which is divided into two columns. So again, we have to duplicate it just to duplicate. Okay. Firstly, we need to delete the image widget because on the W beginner, there's no image widget. So let's delete it. Now it's time to put a heading over here. So in the first column, we have placed this heading just to duplicate this heading and then we can drop it in the last column. Now it's time to change the text. So let's copy the text from here. I need help with copy. Go back to the Elementor and here we can change the heading. All right. Now, if you can see over here, these all are the icon boxes basically. So all the icons are arranged in two columns. I mean one row and two columns. So total three rows and two columns are over here. So go back to the Elementor. Now duplicate this inner section. First of all, remove the top margin. So let's make top and bottom margin to zero. So it will be strict to the top in the upper inner section. Go over here and set the bottom margin to zero. So they both are now sticked. Now from the second section, just delete the heading widget. And inside it, we have to take two columns, add one more column. Okay. Now in the first column, we have to put the icon box. So let's type over here icon and this is the icon box. Just place it over here. Okay. Now here we have this kind of edit icon starting a blog. So go on to this icon library and we can search over here something like edit. Okay. I think this is the matching one. Insert it and then we can change the heading to starting a blog. Let's delete this description from here. Now it's time to go on to the style tab. Firstly, we need to change the icon color. So primary color, let's make it something like blue. Okay. I think that looks fine. And then after we can jump onto the content tab here, we have the title typography available. So let's make it poppins and we need to reduce the size of this font. Also, we have to set the weight to 400. I think that looks better. One more thing I would like to suggest to you in this inner section setting, just go over here. And under the advanced tab, I suggest you to increase the top padding. So this icon and the heading will not be sticked together. So let's increase the top padding. Okay. In the same way, if you can see in the top section, I mean this one, you can see this heading is completely close to the border of its inner section. So go to the setting of this inner section as well. And here we can increase the top padding as well. I think that looks better. 
Once you have created this icon section, you can duplicate this entire column. Put your mouse on this column icon, right click and then duplicate. So the exact same column will be duplicated. Now delete the third column. So right click and then delete. Now it's time to change the icon. So go over here. Let's check on to the WP Beginner. Okay, it looks like WordPress performance. So I'm going over here icon library. Let's check. I'm just going to use a different icon. So this one, let's insert and we can change the text to WordPress performance. Okay, also we can change the icon color. So from here, primary color, let's make it something like orange color. Okay, that looks fine. Once a specific section is ready, I mean one row is ready, then you can duplicate the entire section. Once again. So total we have two columns and three rows. Now one by one you can jump on each of these icon boxes and change the icon. So here I'm going to use this one or let's try to use this one. I'm leaving the text as it is. Let's try to change the color from here. So we have successfully created this section as well. Now in the last section, I suggest you to increase the bottom padding. So there will be some kind of white space in between the border and the content that we have placed inside it. Go on to the advanced tab. Okay, now we have to increase the bottom padding like this. Now let's go ahead and we can refresh the preview page. I think we need to generate the new preview from here. Okay, here we go. So you can see it is almost close to the one that we have on wpbeginner.com. Now if you can see over here on this website, the width of the content is less. So on the Elementor as well, we can specify the width of this entire section. Go on to the outer section setting. Okay, now jump on to the layout tab. And here we can see content width is boxed. So from here, you can specify your own width. This is also under your control. So let's make it like 850. Now it's time to generate a new preview. Here we go. So now it is almost very close to the one that we have on WP Beginner. So in this way, you can also put your own custom content on static content on this blog post page. Now, once this custom template is ready, then you need to click on publish. Now it's time to set the condition over here. Where do you want to display your template? So firstly click on add condition. Now from this drop down, you need to click on it and then click on the pages option. So by default, this template is applicable on all the pages. So click over here and in this search box, you need to type BLOG that is the blog page. Just select this blog and then save and close. So this template will only be applicable on the blog page. Now let's go back to our WordPress website and we can click on this blog menu again. Here we go. So you can see the complete layout has been changed and it is almost similar to the one that we have on wpbeginner.com. A little more polishing is left. So let's go back over here. Firstly, we need to go on to this outer section and we have to increase some kind of inner padding. So go on to the advanced tab and here we have this padding option. Uncheck this icon and then increase the top padding. Okay, up to 30 is fine. Also, we need to set the background color of this first column to white. So edit column, jump onto the style tab and here we have the background type, click on classic, then go on to the colors and make it white. Okay. Also we need to go on to the widget of this posts. Just right click edit post. Now jump onto the style and we need to set the background color to white. So let's jump onto this block tab and here we have background color. It is something like light gray. Let's make it pure white. Now, if you can see over here, there's a small glitch in the right hand side. The background color is white, but the left column is not matching. You can see there is a little difference in the height of both of these columns. So what we can do, we need to go back onto the first column settings, jump onto the style and then remove the white color. Let's make it clear. Now these both are equal. Let's click on update. It's time to refresh our blog page. Okay. Now it is much better. Right now, once I click on any of these specific blog post, this is a full width single blog post page. Let's apply the same template on the single blog post page as well. Go back to the Elementor again. Firstly, we need to exit from this screen. So exit to dashboard. And now we have to create a new template. So go on to this theme builder again. Now click on add new from this drop down. We need to select single post, then give it a name just like single 
post custom template create template now we have already created a template for the blog page so that template is already been saved in this my templates tab just click on it and here you can see custom blog page template so you need to click on insert so the exact same template will be inserted on this new template page as well here we go now all we need to do is just delete the post grid widget that we had used in the first column right click and then delete now in the first column click on this plus now on the left hand side you can see post title just drop it over here after that click on this rubik icon again drop this featured image just below it again go back now it's time to display the post content just below the featured image so it will automatically fetch the content of the specific blog post also we can customize the font family and the font color of the specific heading and the content let's edit the color of this heading so click on this edit post title go to the style and here we have the typography option so let's make the font size something like 20 pixel that looks fine now let's click on the rubik icon again and we can use one more widget this one post navigation just drop it below so it will automatically display the next or previous posts after that click on publish then click on add condition and here you can see include all singular just click on this drop down now here we have to select posts and then leave this all post as it is so this custom template will be applicable on all the upcoming and the existing blog posts at last click on save and close so that's all we have to do and we have successfully created a custom template for our blog page and the single blog page on our wordpress website it's time to refresh our blog page first so let's refresh it now it's time to click on any of the specific blog post here we go so this is exactly looks like the one that we have on wp beginner also we can set the background color to white so let's go back to the elementor and here we need to go on to this column setting go to the style and here we can set the background color to white and one more thing go to the second column this is the second column right click on the column icon okay then jump on to the advanced now firstly uncheck this padding icon and then increase all the paddings except the top one so let's make it something like 20 bottom would also be 20 and left will also be 20 okay at last we can click on update so that's all we had to do and we have successfully created a custom template for our blog page as well as single blog posts let's test once again okay so this is the blog page and then after we can try some other blog post let's try this one here we go also we have placed the post navigation so let's click on this next so the next post will come up and this mechanism works perfectly with all the themes which are available on the WordPress. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe my channel. And if you want any specific video on your topic, then just let me know through the comment section. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.